Well, now you're going to see double. We have two of the best looking ladies in LA for your viewing pleasure. Not only are they talented comedians, they're professional musicians and identical twins. So give it up for Susan and Megan Murphy. to be at the improv. Now take it all in. Well, I'm Susan. I'm Megan. And we are identical twins. <laughs> I think they can see that. But they don't know that we both love magic. <laughs> Susan, that we love magic. Magic is how we make money. And it's so easy. <laughs> But it's not very practical. Right. Because this way takes forever. All the way goes straight to the cash. <laughs> I love having a fraternal twin. Um, we're identical. Oh, good. 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 Because that way, if I ever need an organ transplant, I don't have to wait for a donor. Well, which one of my organs do you have in mind? Your appendix. You don't need it. <laughs> no, I don't need my appendix. I'm not going to give it to you. Sorry. Well, I guess you know what the selfish one is. <laughs> well, I, I am not selfish, but I'm not going to give you my appendix. Well, then can I borrow it? Yeah, I think Susan's a little confused because um, usually in this part of the show, we perform a classic feat of magic. So well, then I need new shoes. What do you mean? Body parts. F-E-A-T, feet, not your feet. So I don't get new shoes. Is it possible to be an identical twin and have one be adopted? Is that possible? <laughs> You're adopted? No, Susan, you were the one adopted, but they brought you back. Just for that, just for that, I am breaking up with your boyfriend. <laughs> As I was saying, it's a classic feat of magic. You may have all seen this before. Cut and restored rope. Yes, it's the cut and restored rope. And I have to be very good at this at this effect. And uh, which you need a rope. Yes. Absolutely. And you can do it. Has who seen this trick before? Anyone in the audience? Just, oh, you have? Okay. Well, good. Then you'll really enjoy it. <laughs> and I'm going to show you this effect. No, so that's actually... Megan's not very good at this. Let me do it. First thing you're going to do is find the center of the rope, which I think is right about here. You know, Susan, you cut that off faster than your last relationship. <laughs> Megan's hired a comedy writer, very funny. You know, she's referring to Ronald. That clown. Clowns. <laughs> Clowns are fun. Clowns are supposed to be fun, am I right? But he wasn't very centered, so he split. Yes. But as I recall, you split with Ronald because you realized he didn't actually <laughs> own McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Noisy at wedding receptions. Right? <laughs> there were a lot of guys that 
Tito's there in my defense. How is I supposed to know that he was the one tying the knot? <laughs> You're hopeless. I think she's hopeless. I'm not hopeless because there's still one more guy. Oh, really? Yes. This guy from San Diego. Who? Tom. Tom's my boyfriend. <laughs> Does he know he's dating you? Listen, no more dates <laughs> and no more knots. <laughs> Why is that? Did it ever occur to you that some men might prefer women who aren't so mercenary? What? I said mercenary. Oh, I thought you said missionary. I said that. <laughs> Than just the size of his, you know, stock portfolio. <laughs> Such as the size of his commodities. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> put, put those away, please. Yeah. Why? She collects engagement rings. Yeah. Collect rings. Everyone needs a hobby, actually. Hobbies are collecting stamps and points, not engagement rings. What about Elizabeth Taylor? Elizabeth Taylor collects men. The engagement rings just happen to come with the men, and I kind of remember her marrying a few of them. Well, I believe that if the wedding is called off, the lady should be allowed to keep the ring. <laughs> yes, but um, in, in the guy's defense, Susan broke off with her last fiance because she was dating his best friend. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. He, <laughs> 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 so I had to join her up here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she's my twin. Yes, she was. The He's the one who called off the wedding. I was still willing to get married. You should be in Congress. You get a ring for that? <laughs> well, as, as you can see, Susan's ideas about life are somewhat convoluted, especially her ideas about relationships. I have relationships down to a science. Mm -hmm. I have three little rules. Yes, money, money, and oh yeah, money. <laughs> no, I don't care if he has money. Rule number one is that he has to drive a Mercedes Porsche or Jaguar. Okay, well, that either leaves men who have money or car thieves. So, rule two, names are very important. So I've decided only going to date men with names rich, cash, and worth. <laughs> okay, okay, well, what else? Rule number three is it has to be successful, and this requires a great deal of sacrifice on my part. I have to go out with really old men. <laughs> like last week, I had to go out with this guy, and he was like, 40? <laughs> 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 it gets worse. Okay, it gets worse. Yeah, I've been talking my ear off all night about this group called Casey and the Sunshine Boys. Uh, but, you know, I, at least he showed you a good time. I he showed me a good time. He took me out around town and showed me a good time. He showed me other people having a good time. Look at those people over there having a good time. And those people, they're having a good time, too. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, at least he didn't he didn't ask us both out. I mean, that is, I mean, we go to parties and guys want to know if we do everything together. <laughs> and, and, and then, as twins, we don't have any role models. I oh, mean, that is so not true. The Olsen twins don't count. <laughs> Opportunities are very limited. I mean, you have double minute commercials or um, freak show, yeah, and um, or Hugh Hefner's girlfriends. I mean, there's not a lot of career opportunities available. Okay, okay, so, okay Socrates, enough of the twin psychology, okay? Psychology, that's Freud. Let's see the next effect. It's actually my favorite. It's, yeah, it's her favorite because she doesn't know how it works. <laughs> yes, I do. It involves science and magic. Susan, if you knew the difference between science and magic, you would have graduated three years earlier. I, I had a 3.7 blood alcohol level. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't drink. Oh, then what do you call putting Don Perignon on cornflakes? <laughs> Breakfast. <laughs> Anyways, our final effect, I'm going to show it to you now. Okay. Yes. You may have all done this in elementary school. Were you getting glass? Yes. And you fill it with some water. Yes. And then you take a little piece of paper and you dip it inside the water, just like that. Yes. Put it on top of the glass very carefully. And okay. That is science. Thank you. That is magic.
Thank you very much.